So we took the upper radiator hose off. It looks pretty good except for the ends. They're kind of swollen up, which is a good indication they need replaced. The bottom one has a kind of a universal fit. It's disconnected. We pretty much drained the bulk of that out. I'm taking the transmission lines loose. We've got our 5 8 wrench and our half inch wrench. So when we look at what we've got here, of course we've opened up a whole new area of engine and frame and suspension that we didn't have access to before. I think what I'm going to do, at least right now, just trying to plan, I might take this down to the water pump or replace the water pump. Uh, it's been setting so long, I've seen the inside of some of them after they've set at least that long and it's usually not pretty could be fine but i think i'll they're cheap enough it's a you know i think the last time i traded one of those out at uh, the core was like a penny so there's you know they're pretty common so obviously the pulleys will come off and uh it'll allow us to get in there clean off the front of the engine paint it just like we did on the top and around the back side and then we'll de detail all of this other stuff while we're in here other than that, I know we have some suspension issues, uh, mainly in the steering. Uh, the idler arm, we have one of the idle arms that is, that is for sure bad, the other one I'm not sure about. And we'll look at the uh, manual steering box. We do have some play here. So I'll have that, I'll figure out what to do with that. But this is a good place to start as far as this front area here before we go putting all the front panels and the radiator back in. We'll just get all this stuff straightened out, cleaned up, painted, and looking good.
All right, so uh, when I got down there to the shaft on the water pump, I realized it was kind of squishy, like a rubbery squishy. So I thought, okay, let's go ahead and get this thing off. And I'll show you that in a second. But I went ahead and got that off and the rest of the hose is off. And so we got a pretty clean little area or uh, open area we can clean up. We'll just uh, get all this coolant spatter cleaned up. This water pump, secure it so you can hear that it's like squeak and it's awful tight so I think we're gonna grab us a new pump trade that one in and then uh, we'll paint it up and then we'll get to cleaning all this junk up make it look nice and pretty uh, I think I'll go ahead and take the this pulley will get pulled off paint it black and we'll pop the uh, fuel pump off and take a look at that get some new gaskets in there and uh, everything else get painted blue up front here as well as the water pump and then all this other stuff where we can get any anything that we see uh, that could be accessed easy enough or a good clean we'll uh, paint it black or silver it just depends and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the balancer off here and the timing chain so I can get a good look at the timing chain. Uh, I know you could probably access a little bit of it through here, but I just want to see the whole picture and uh, make sure that our uh, surfaces seal up good. Uh, Mopar Nut 62 suggests that we sand down the surface a little bit against the block where the timing chain cover adheres to because it can tend to be a little slick I, I think I kind of agree with them there and it could cause leaks later because it just moves around too much so a couple things we're gonna go out here um, this in particular the balancer it took a little bit to get this bolt loose and just a little tip and maybe not everybody will do it this way but I just took a C clamp and carefully put it on here to where it would butt up against the timing chain cover and in particular I had to use one of the where they drilled it out for the weight reduction at and I was able to put it in there to where it to kind of grab you might have a better clamp if you do more power to you and I was able to tighten it real good make sure it doesn't distort it off of because there's a rubber isolator in here and you don't want to disturb anything like that but it's enough to tighten it and I took our inch and a quarter wrench here and just gave it some swift smacks this direction and it was able to kind of shock it loose as well as not turn at the same time so we got it loose and we're gonna go ahead and get the bolt out and we're gonna put it aside with some of our stuff to get cleaned up and painted Now this, it's like a steering wheel, and you can use a steering wheel slash pulley puller. And we've got one right here. Actually, it should go in that way. And in some cases, you got to watch what tip you put on here. Some of them, you got this tip that removes; it's flat. Um, there's even one here. Yeah, that's got the point on it. I think we'll we'll go with the point just to not mar up any surface on the snout of the crank and you can kind of get it about there and we'll see which I can't remember which one of these bolts yeah that one so usually they give you a variety of bolts and we just need a couple of them put one in on one side and you want to make sure you thread it in there at least a good half an inch so you don't rip the threads out tear up stuff take this other make sure it's clean on the end and we will jiggle finagle this into the space we hope there we go and now we want to get our wrench and make sure these are in a little further I 
I like to make sure they're nice and even. I think it's better to use the tool this way. Well, that comes out pretty flush. So once you get that, then you could depress it up against the head of the bolt. And then we'll put our, I think it's a 5 eighths on here. And we'll want to tighten that. Now this is for the, the new guys is this. You old timers, you know exactly what's going on here. So we're just going to tighten it down until it starts pulling it off of the engine. And once it starts coming off the engine a little bit, that's usually a done deal. Sometimes it'll get a lot easier to turn. You realize it's actually pulling it. And yeah, I'm seeing it right now. It's pulling it right out. You can kind of see the gap up here. This one's been on there a long time, so it might be a little more stubborn. But I don't think it should be too bad. It's definitely taking more work than I usually would. Steering wheels, for certain, you can take them off this way and... Once you get a few turns of it on there, it usually slips right off the shaft. And yeah, this one's on there pretty solid. There we go. I felt it move. You probably saw it move. There we go. One thing, I'll, I'll give you some information here. On these small block Chryslers, there's always a date right here. There's this little wheel, looks like a little spoked wagon wheel. And when you see that, there's a number in it. That'll tell you what year that that particular timing cover is from. It won't tell you the exact engine, although this is probably original. This is a 72 build. And it says 1971, or it just says 7-1 on it. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Very likely that this is original. If you ever see the timing marks here on this side, that means it's 1969 and back. So this is usually into the 70s by the time you see this. So we're going to work on getting this off in the fuel pump, and we'll see what we got inside there. All right, so we've uh, drained off whatever other coolant likes to poke out of some of these holes. The one over here, and then this one here, there's a lot of, uh, it's a coolant passage basically behind it, so you wanna watch when you pull those out. Sometimes one of these on the water pump side as well. So just have a pan around or a bottle or a funnel, whatever you need. You get the two half inch bolts, one on here. Here, it's basically oil pan bolts. They're a little bit different than the other ones. So keep those in mind. Now this is an aluminum casing, okay? It's a, the whole situation is not hard steel or anything. It's just a soft aluminum. So the gasket is the only thing holding it on right now. Just make sure you have all your bolts out. Sometimes you'll get to, if you're in a car and you're looking down at it rather than face on, you don't see this bolt. So make sure you've cleared all your bolts out. We're going to take this dead blow hammer. And just convince it. To come on out. Now these here on the top. Make sure that they're out. I'm just going to go ahead and pull them out actually. Lay them over here. Because they do go into the block. Okay. These ones might as well. I can't remember. It's actually been a while since I've gotten into one of these, but I do remember most of it. There we go. Yet more coolant wants to come out, so we're gonna put a bucket under that.
if there was any coolant or any let's say any fluid I hate dealing with on a vehicle it's coolant it has that real greasy oily feel even when you get it dried off it just feels gritty wet it's just ugh, sticky now usually when you do this of course this is gonna need it anyways since it's been setting so long change the oil after you get all this button back up because a lot of that coolant will get down in the oil pan because this is open down here once you pull this out pretty clean looks like the uh, they whooped up on the uh, snout seal the front main seal they whooped up on that pretty good right in here I wouldn't say that's too bad I'm sure there's a uh, certain tolerance good thing this is on there sometimes these are missing it's kind of like an oil slinger or type of situation And if anybody ever sees that AAQA right in here, that's on like every block. It's nothing special. It doesn't mean anything profound. The good thing is this has been changed because the factory had the nylon gear around here. And especially after setting as long as it has, that nylon gear would probably be nice and dry, nice and brittle, and you go to really run this thing and it probably shear it right off and then you've busted your timing chain well this looks pretty trustworthy here I don't think I'll I'll put another chain on I'll just go with this clean all these up and like I said the seal here on the bottom it's a rubber seal right there you get a new one of those and it plugs into the into the old pan here that's what this is and then our gasket that goes all the way around and then we'll get a new front main seal that'll go around this, but it'll go into the cover, timing chain cover. Here's one thing we'd like to clean out, just a little bit too much sealant right there. We want to put it on a little more conservative because that could cause problems there with overheating. Same with this one, especially as loose as it is. And all of it getting down here in the oil, get stuck in the oil pan or the, uh, the pickup in the oil pan. So, that'll be the next endeavor. Quiet! Quiet on the set! Gee, there's plenty of room to work in here. Okay, Doc, here we go. Action! Hi there, van fans! This is the all-new 1971 Dodge Strong Box. The big tradesman van with a package of 31 features you can't get on any other van at the Dodge Boys now. Cut! No, no, you gotta make it tougher. Let's do one more. Hey, will you look at that! This baby's got the optional power steering, power brakes, and load pack transmission. Okay, Don. Let's shoot it. Action. Okay, listen up out there. This is the all-new 1971 Dodge Strong Box. The big tradesman van with a package of 31 features you can't get on any other van. At the Dodge Boys now. Cut. Don, I don't know, but there's something wrong with this commercial. Um, I'll tell you what's wrong. Why don't you mention the wide cargo doors? Or the hidden cargo step? Or the optional dash-mounted air conditioning, or the 26-gallon gas tank. The Dodge Strong Box. See it at your Dodge Boys. And this is my Dodge Strong Box, and it's time to nip this, nip it in the bud.
Okay, so we're covering a multitude of things here, and I've let this soak overnight. It still needs a lot of cleanup. I got the gasket off the back of it. I want to knock out the, the front main seal that's in here. Some of these are different. You gotta watch this part here. It might be more, uh, let's just say that the seal looks different in some of these, and you just gotta be careful you're not busting on the timing chain itself. Like some people might think that this ring right here is part of the seal, but that's not correct. That is actually part of the casting of this whole thing. So, like I said in the other video, you can see where it's kind of been picked around at here. I don't know what was going on. Maybe they was trying to knock it out and they just went ahead and left it in there. But you have this rubber in here, but I think the best thing to do, if you've got one of these, is see, I have to use a flat screwdriver on, on this stuff because I don't have a chisel or a, anything like that. If you put it inside of here and then knock it downward, you can usually get a, a good knockout on it. Uh, you don't want to put it here. That's just the rubber seal. You'll just tear that off and get nowhere. So we're going to try to do it here and see what we can do. So as I figured, it's just the, the rubber seal part. Still not enough. Like I said, just continue to be careful. Because look, we're tearing that seal up pretty good. At least the body of it. Sometimes if you break enough of the seal around the edge, then you can come from the in the top side of it and pop it out. I don't have as much holding it. So we'll try that a little bit, move around. And that's probably what they was trying to do here at one time before they gave up on it. Again, we're being careful of the casting, the aluminum casting. We don't want to put it on that part and hit it because then we're going to mar it up or break it or crack it. Do kind of a star pattern here. Oh, that's, there we go, right here. Watch. See that? And that's it. So we are good to go on that. We got a new one ordered. Be here a few days. I used to get this stuff like right away at the parts store, but they don't carry it. Starting to phase it out, I guess, as far as a uh, local carry. So this whole kit, the gasket kit to put this back on, we're gonna have to wait, but we'll get it all cleaned up in the meantime. Alright, so here is our timing chain cover. After some degreasing, some paint stripper, a little bit of sanding, a lot of this getting down in these little crevices, that sort of thing, we're almost ready to paint it. A little bit of brake cleaner as well. The only thing I'm really going to do, I'm going to clean out some of these holes. They have some sealant in them still, right here. We're going to clean those out, shoot it one more time with some brake cleaner, dry it off and just put a nice pretty coat of blue Chrysler engine paint on it. We've got our balancer. We've painted it both sides. we got these parts setting. And I will say this needs another coat right here. These are good. And then we've got our fan. We've got it sitting under the paint stripper. I actually did it a little bit ago. I got busy, so I didn't get around to it. So we'll freshen it up, soften everything up on it, and then we'll try to scrape it off and then sand it down. Now all these bolts that we cleaned up earlier, we got them laying out here, letting them dry off a little bit after we neutralized them. And we got these two pulleys. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the rust off of here. It should be about there. Yeah, really good shape. So we'll take that out, put it in our neutralizing, it sizzle up. And we'll 
it'll dry it off real quick. Actually, I need to see that rust. There's some rust down there. Just turn it around this way. Get that out in about five minutes. It'll be good. Dry it off and then sand it down. As along with that one, paint them black. All right. So that's what's left of the stuff that needs to be kind of taken care of. And really, it's not much. You know, just just a handful of bolts. Over here we got our pulleys. Here's our water pump pulley. Here's our crank pulley. Look pretty nice now. I might put another coat on that one. And then we got our fan. Looks pretty good, don't it? Okay, so we noticed the lights are off. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. And we got a wasp floating around here. He's gonna get killed if he keeps that up. Cause I'm in one of them moods, right? Okay. Yeah, you get out of here. I'll tell you all about it. See all the sticks out here? I need to clean them up. Okay, so this pretty much just leaves us running this engine to clean off. I'm gonna take my ring off. I don't wanna get hung up on them. All right, so we're gonna clean off the gaskets, all this silicone, all that fun stuff. And I'll tell you what happened last night. I was actually in the middle of working out here and uh, my wife said something about the way that this uh, back of my yard looked. It had some oddball grass growing up and sort of thing like that. So I go back there to look and when I look, I notice up in the sky is this huge shelf cloud. All right, It's coming from the north. A little unusual. And it looks like a big claw just crawling across the sky real low. Okay. So I had some of the stuff laying out on the side of the shop. I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna go put it inside the shop because it's probably gonna rain really good here. It looks kind of evil. So I proceed to do that. And uh, I'm putting stuff inside. And make sure you uh, cover, if you're a small block Mopar, that you cover this because it goes down to the oil pan. You don't wanna get a bunch of junk down in there. So right there, I'd say it was be. Try again. So anyways, I'm uh, getting stuff inside. And um, it gets pretty pretty nasty real quick. So wind, limbs, all these limbs are falling. It was pretty, pretty heavy there right then. So no big deal, I go in and I eat supper. But right before I do, I'm looking at the neighbor's house over there and I see a big green reflection of flash of light. And right over about two houses down there, there's a transformer on a pole. A limb hit it and knocked it out or something. And it's just over there spazzing out something crazy. This transformer just, just sparks shooting out of it. Well, that happened last year about this time of year on a Saturday night. And uh, it took all the power out in the house and half the block until about, I don't know, 6.30 the next morning, they was working on it and did their thing and got it fixed. No big deal. It was hot, but we put up with it. So this time, nothing goes out until about an hour later. Neighbors across the street had seen it and said, it continued to just for the next little bit, and it finally took out five houses on my street. Mine being one of them. So, okay, power's out. 
That happens. You deal with it. I still was out here doing some stuff, sanding down some things. The fan blade and one of the pulleys. I went ahead and sanded it. I put my phone, turned the flashlight on, put it up on the shelf, and continued to have something to do there, right? Well, I get through with that and I paint it for what I can see. We had a little lantern out here, a little light LED light lantern. And uh, we got all that on. Sufficient light. We go in and they said, well, projected time of uh, improvement or, you know, fixing the power back on. 2.30 in the morning. So we're like, well, crap. Might as well just go to bed. Ain't nothing to do. Don't use up all our phone and all that stuff. So we had trouble going to sleep, at least I do. And um, I'm awoken. And I don't know what time it was. It was pitch black out because I can't look at a phone. I don't have a wristwatch or anything. I have no clue what time it is. But I'm hearing this. But it sounds like sheet metal. And I'm thinking, well, I guess they're out there fixing it. But what is that noise? What what are they hitting? So I let it go for like a half an hour, and I'm just hearing that periodically. So finally, I decide I need to see what they're doing, where they're at, because there's a transformer across that property, and then the one that blew up. Well, I saw on that one blew up. They did something there, and it fixed it. I don't know what. So, I decided to get up. I stumble into the living room and look out the door, and there's a utility truck sitting in the house next door in front of it in the street. And this uh, guy, he's got his hard hat on, his neon colored vest, and he is doing this. So he's slapping the door shut on his utility bed. And I guess, I guess it's not latching, I don't know. But in my head, in my tired brain, I'm thinking, this is not fixing the electricity. And I think I'm gonna get mad now because who does that in the middle of the night, morning, whatever. So then he proceeds to get out a chisel type object, a knife of some sort, chisel, and a hammer, and starts beating on the latch on the thing. So I'm guessing he was trying to unfix the latch, because I'm guessing it wasn't stuck, because the door was open, but it was probably anti-stuck, I don't know. I mean... So I go back to bed thinking, okay, they're dealing with this, they're getting it under control. So I go back to sleep, I managed to fall asleep even through all that racket, which is, you know, literally like 200 feet away. And I wake up at 9.30, and do we have any power in the house at 9.30? Nope. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. We still don't have any power. So I don't have any lights out here, which is fine, because I got daylight still. But that's the situation that's going on here. Now I know these guys do, they do some hard work. But it's just, that was strange to me. They just sat there wailing away on that door. I'm like, get a piece of duct tape, tape it shut, and then get it back to your shop. I don't want to have to wake up and hear it, especially when my house is slowly inching up in temperature because of not having air conditioning, which I'll admit we all get pretty spoiled with, right? I mean, it's one reason why I get in the car. I do not turn up max AC because that increases the amount of pain 
that you experience when you go from max AC, you open the door into the heat that you're trying to combat. It's just a bigger shocker. So I just try to moderate it to where it's not as big of a difference. Plus, if we're going to start driving this stuff and it don't have air conditioning on it, don't get too used to it because you're going to really want it. So you just kind of acclimate yourself. So I've got most of this casket off and then I guess part of the silicone. And then we're going to clean it up and then throw some uh, little bug, probably 80 grit on it just to sand this surface, kind of rough it up just a little bit, but not too much to distort it, but make a nice grab for the new, the new gasket. Yeah, so uh, about three hours later, we have electricity. Well, it's cool. I'll show you. I'm sitting here working, doing our cleaning. We pretty much have what we feel like we want to do on the engine here. Now, but I'm cleaning up some of the cross member. That's a job in and of itself. But the uh, our local electric guys came in. You see that transformer right there? Well, I happened to be looking out. I heard them fooling around with it. They've been out here about 20 minutes. And right when I was doing something here, I looked up, saw him flip a switch, and then this light came on. So thank goodness, because now I got our fan going, and it just feels like a totally different evening now. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. Here's what we got. I've got the top of these cleaned off fairly well. I think we can get it good enough to put some black on it and just go on. And I'm gonna go up to about here, get some of this not all of it because we can do the rest on that side later if we do any work so we'll, we'll go around this just a little bit I've got some of this cleaned up so we'll just get black it out a little bit I ain't gonna worry about the suspension because that'll get pulled out here later and we'll, we'll have it when it's out easier to do with and then we'll paint the block blue and we'll try to move on Alright, so here it is. Got the blue and got the black. I didn't spend too much time on the black. The blue I've got a little detailed with. But it's just a, just a quick twice over, I would say, of each color. And like I said, this stuff will probably come out soon anyways. So I'm not worried about that. We'll deal with it and paint it maybe a, a cast iron color or something when it's out. And we'll clean this area up. But this will help us go far when we get our gasket kit and our seal and all that stuff, we can put it on here and get the timing chain cover back on and uh, start kind of reversing this process, putting it all back together. We got the panels laying over there on the floor. They will go here and here. And then uh, we'll paint them up and refinish them however we need to do it and start putting all this back together. Next we'll be doing some refinishing there, probably painting some little, a little bit more of the red. We'll be getting some new hoses for this engine while it's all out. And that's pretty much the situation right now. So, uh, hmm. So we'll get some of that buttoned up and then I'll probably do the carburetor rebuild this week. But the next big, big project I'm going to say will probably be the dash. We'll get the dash in, get the wiring back in and out of it, paint the dash, see what we can do about a dash pad, deal with that challenge, and then attempt to get it to where we can start the van, to where we can run it in and out of the garage without having to push it. And at least we can say, yep, it's running now. And then we will work towards doors, getting them all on, getting the windshield in, and then going through the interior. Some point in there, it'll be, yeah, the body work, that sort of thing. So, with that said, 
Just make sure you subscribe, right? We're going slow on the subscribers right now. I don't know what's going on. Maybe we're boring. Maybe the detail series here is boring. I'll admit it, maybe it's boring. Do you think it's boring? If it is, tell me and I'll just change it up. We don't want to lose your attention. I know it's 2020 and people have short attention spans. But we want to cater to your attention span. You understand what I'm saying? So, stay tuned. We'll get into the more interesting stuff. Body work. Maybe that's why you all follow me, because of the body work. I don't know. Make sure you like, share. Share to your friends, all right? Let them know, especially if they need help. And then subscribe. Thanks for coming to the Hoosier Garage. See you next time.